Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Acts 2, 1 through 21, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. There was a one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues. Just underline that, began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and they were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not that all these which speak Galileans? And we hear every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Amalites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Other mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this done unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose. Hallelujah, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, I saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, signs on the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, smoke. The sun shall be turned into the darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Woo! Initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Spirit of God coming in this dispensation for the first time in this manifestation, he became, and when they put out on the, on the uh, day of Pentecost, in the upper room, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Um, I, want, I want us to look at the incidences in the, new, in, in the book of Acts where they were filled with the Spirit initially. Now, not, not refillings. You know, there's just cases where, you know, they were the, the same bunch that had been filled initially got filled again. But I'm talking about initially. I want to look at those incidents. There's five. And I want to study them. Amen? Because we want to rightly divide the word of truth. We don't want opinion about stuff. We want Bible. Amen. Uh, let's look, so the first one, we underlined that, didn't we? We underlined what? And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So that first time they got filled, they spoke with what? What else? All right. So number one. one first incident, spoke with tongues. Second incident, Acts chapter 8. Verses 5 through 21. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord. <clears throat> now, let me back up. This first incident, Acts 2, 21, 1 through 21, um, our, our resident PhD and I have had numerous discussions over the years as to when the church started. Now, for a long, 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 long time, I, I disagreed with him and my spiritual mentor saying, believe in the church started on the day of Pentecost. I've come to view and see that the church started when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. They were born again. Okay? So I've taken the Dr. Bill stand. <clears throat> so on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And they spoke with tongues. And let's get back to eight, Acts chapter 8. Uh, people gave uh, one, uh, one accord, gave things... Uh, then Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. 
And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out many that were possessed with them. Many taken with palsy that were lame were healed. And there was such, and there was great joy in the city. There's a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom we, they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. Now, excuse me. When the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was fallen on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if they've received the word of God and been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, guess what they is? They're believers. They're saved. They is born again. And after they heard that they had been born again, they sent Peter and John down there to lay hands on them and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. So people go around saying, when you get saved, you get all the Holy Ghost. You, man, they need to call up Peter and John and tell them they missed it. They need to call up the church at Jerusalem and say, you guys blew it. Didn't you know that when you get saved, you get all the Holy Ghost you're going to get? Now, these are, the, these are the chief apostles. These are the head of the church heard that when Samaria had received the word of God, they packed up Peter and John and sent them down there on a Holy Ghost filling mission. To get them filled with the Holy Ghost. They received the Word of God. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, but the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen on them. As a matter of fact, it says, He had for as yet he had fallen on none of them. Only they had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They're, they're born again. They believed on Christ. They've been water baptized in his name. They're believers. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that the, through the laying on of apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, now he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that whomever I lay my hands will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I may have missed a word or two. That was, I was just quoting out of here. He's a former sorcerer. He's bewitched the people for years. He's no fly-by-night flunky. He's operated in demonic power. And he sees something so powerful and so non-reproducible that he goes to God and says, man, give me this power. Here's money. I want that same power. Something happened. They didn't go, I am now a spirit-filled believer. He wouldn't offer money for that. Something took place. Something took place so radical that someone that had worked miraculous signs and wonders of a demonic sort in front of the people, he thought he knew it was supernatural. So they didn't stop and go, I thank you, Lord. I've now received the Holy Ghost. I now am living a spirit-filled life. His response wouldn't have been that way. Are you here? You're going home. Let's go on. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because you have thought you could bought the gift of God, that the gift of God may be purchased with money. <clears throat> now the infilling of the Holy Ghost was not the gift of God he's referring here to. They had an endowment and a gift to lay hands on people to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, he wanted the power to get them filled. So they were endowed or gifted to get the people filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Peter said, your money perished with you because you, you thought you could buy the gift of God. 
And it, so Peter was saying we're endowed. There's an endowment of our gifting we've been given. Then when we lay hands on people, we get them filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Amen. The Holy, the, the Holy Spirit wasn't the gift. Amen. The, the, he, he is the gift that they get, but what, what Simon was after was the gift or the power to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Say, you know, uh, and Peter said, Thy money perish with thee, because you thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart's not right in the sight of God. The word matter, and I always get this mixed up. Let me, let me, just don't let me get it mixed up. I'm not going to mix it up today. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is one of the Greek, and I, I, I just need to put it in my notes. I need to write it so I'll always not forget it. Hallelujah. We're in Acts, right? Chapter 8, right? About verse 14. 21. Okay. The word here in the Greek is logos. And, it, and one of the things that logos can mean is utterance. It does mean word. And so the, the really, the, you know, but King James used a one-word translation. Really, your heart's not right. This, you're, you have neither part nor light in this matter of utterance. In this word, in this thing that's happened. This, see, it's not just in this matter. It's not a matter of, it's not, you know, in this um, event. It's mat, it, it, they use a different word, matter, utterance, logos. You don't have, your part, you don't have neither part nor light in this logos. Something was spoken. Now, folks, if you've been a magician or wizard or a sorcerer, and somebody lays hands on them and says, be, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and they, in their own language, just start going, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm not mocking. I'm trying to get you, get you to see an example here. I got the Holy Ghost. Woo, praise God, I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm just so glad I got the Holy Ghost. You're not going to offer money to, get, to be able to do that. You'll just tell people what to do. But if something took place in the same manner that took place on the day of Pentecost, you just can't make that up. When they lay hands on them, they got filled with the Holy Ghost, and there was an utterance. Now, we believe the, the, the evidence would lead towards they did the same thing they did on the day of Pentecost. They spoke with tongues. All right? Underline that. All right? Let's go on over to... Now I got to get back to my notes. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts 10, 44. Matter is logos. It's right here in my notes. I did put it in my notes. Matter of utterance in the Greek. Acts 10, let's look down at verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they are the circumcision, that means the Jews, which believed were astonished, they were Jewish believers, as much as came to Peter because that on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now the word for conveys the thought of because. Okay? They, 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 it says because they were poured, poured out them the gift of the Holy Ghost for or because they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter said, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And they commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and he tarried there in, in certain days. Now, so number two, underline verse 46, they heard them speak with tongues. Now we've had already read three, three references or three things in the New Testament, and two of them already specifically said that when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they... Spoke with tongues. It didn't say, for they heard them speak with tongues or magnify God. They spoke with tongues and magnified God. I went to the refrigerator and got out a cheer wine or a glass bottle of Dr. Pepper from West Jefferson Dr. Pepper Bottling Company. Hallelujah. Nice and cold. Made with real pure cane sugar. 
Now, if I went to the refrigerator and got it out, I did both. I just didn't get one. I had to get to the refrigerator. See, they magnified God in the spirit after they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues. Okay? So we have, this is the second. So the, the, the first one, I spoke with tongues. The second one, it's, it's you, you could easily say it's implied, that, but even if not, we know something happened that was supernatural and it had to do with verbiage. Okay? Hallelujah. Uh, back up to Acts chapter 9. <laughs> I don't know how did I put my notes wrong. Hallelujah. I try to go straight through. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Paul, I'm saying, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired letters of him to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any in the way, or this way, whether they were, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined right on the back of him a light from heaven and fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou? Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And the, you know what? Can I put this little modern hick? You're in a heap of trouble, boy. Because yeah. yep. here, here's the deal. You're getting saved or you're going to hell, and it's going to be right now. Because you're messing with my church. And get all the King Jimmy off of it. Get all the Elizabethan off of it. That's what the Lord showed up for. He showed up to stop him. But Paul was smart enough to realize he'd come to the end of the road. And he better do something. So he said, are you the Lord? <laughs> yeah, Jesus said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord. Remember, Paul's the one who wrote if you'll, if you'll believe in your heart that God's raised you from the dead and, and confess him as Lord, you'll be saved. Amen? Isn't that right? Peter preached and said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, he, Lord, who, uh, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and he called on the name of the Lord, didn't he? And the Lord said, to rise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the and men uh, which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when he opened his eyes, he saw no man. But when they led him by the hand, brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And then Ananias said, Lord, you got to be kidding me. Now, that's not what the King James says, but here's how, here's how the King James says, Lord, you've got to be kidding me. <clears throat> Lord, I've heard much by many of this man how much evil he's done to the saints in Jerusalem. It's like, don't you know that man will kill me? <laughs> it's amazing how dumb we think the Lord is sometimes. Now, I'm not, I'm not being sacrilegious. We can think the Lord doesn't know what's going on. And that's just stupid because he always knows what's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. And, um, and here he has authority for the chief priest to bind all the call in your name. But the Lord said unto him, go your way. And so I say, son, I know what I'm doing. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel. And I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, putting his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight. And, now here's another evidence that <coughs> being filled with the Holy Ghost is not getting saved. We go, How do you know? What's the, what did he call him? What, what did Ananias call Saul? Brother Saul. Brother Saul. The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, has sent me. To lay hands on you, you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother Saul. Not the Lord sent me to get you saved. He sent me to get you filled with the Holy Ghost and get your sight back. Now, the day, he, and remember when the Lord spoke to Ananias, he doesn't have a record of him telling him to go get him filled with the Holy Ghost. So apparently sometime between while he was on the way over, the Lord said, and, and, and lay hands on him and get him filled with the Holy Ghost too. That's, that's obvious from the, you know, what happens here. And immediately there fell his, from his eyes 
as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And it doesn't say a thing about what happened when he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Except in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul wrote and said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Now, if you'll study that out in the Greek, it literally means I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you or all of you put together. This is in the chapter where everybody messes up and twists it and turns it and says Paul didn't want to have anybody speaking in tongues. He said in the church, I'd rather speak five words of my understanding that I might instruct others than 10,000 words in tongues. Then he said this, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than God. Then my question is, when did he start speaking in tongues? Well, we've already got, we've covered two, we've already covered three. Two of them specifically state at that moment in time they spoke with tongues. The third one implies that some verbiage or something uttered was so supernatural that a former sorcerer wanted to have it. And then now we have Paul the fourth one, and we know he spoke with tongues. I can only conclude that he, did, he, got, he started speaking tongues the same time everybody else did when they got filled. I said, when they got filled. Hallelujah. I can't conclude he got it at some other time. That's not what we, there's no evidence so far yet that people start speaking tongues later when, when it does say that something took place. When it says it, it's when they got filled. All right? Let's look at Acts chapter 19. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I've given you two that when they got filled, they spoke. Hallelujah. Let's go to the third one. Acts chapter 19, we'll read from verses 1 through 7. I'm still breaking in this Bible. It's the pages are still stuck together, but that's all right. Cap said, have you written in it yet? I said, no, nah, this is my preaching Bible. He says, well, if you can't write in that, we'll go to our bookstore. <laughs> Get you one of them. You can write in that. <laughs> okay, good, good one. Good one. It came to pass that while Apollos was at a corner, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, of, uh, came to Ephesus and found certain came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, we've not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said, well, how were you baptized? They said, into John's baptism. See, somebody came along who had enough revelation that Jesus was Savior, and they baptized him like John done to repentance, but they were believers. Finding certain disciples... Everybody say disciples. And said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? See, they, were con they must have been confessing Jesus or Paul wouldn't have called them disciples. And said, well, you ain't heard of the Holy Ghost. Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, Jesus said, go into all the world, preaching the gospel of every creature, baptizing the name of the Father and the Son. It's looking for the, that clear podium kind of gets you, gets you sometime. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then Paul said, barely, uh, John barely baptized with the baptism of the repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, that should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, praise God, we want to do the right thing. So we, now, wait a second now. Now, are these people born again? Are they born again? They believed on him. They've been, warped. They've been baptized in his name. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And prophesied. Didn't just speak with tongues. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. Didn't speak with tongues or prophesied. They did both. And the number of them was about 12. Now, this is the fifth, the last initial infilling we have recorded in the book of Acts. Did you underline and spoke with tongues? Did you underline and spoke with tongues in the other places? They join the line where it says they had no, no, you know, the part in a lot in this matter, which is in the Greek logos, which is matter of utterance. They join the line where Paul got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then over Acts, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, he thanked God he spoke with tongues more than them all. Now, I want to say something because a lot of y'all were somewhere last night. And, and somebody said something. And, 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 and if they could have left that out, everything else would have been awesome. We put too much, we tend to put too much emphasis on certain things when we're talking about people being filled with the Holy Ghost. No, we don't. The Bible puts the emphasis on it. Now, I'm not here to, because everything else was said was great. 
I was just thrilled with it. But that, part, that bothered me because it's like, you know, trying to make people make it something palatable by accusing the church of putting too much emphasis on what God's word puts emphasis on. The word of God put the emphasis on over and over and over again. It's the, the word of God's the one that said when they got filled, they spoke with tongues. There wasn't, you know, wasn't a thing that you get a certain gift. And I actually, I went and did some study. The word gift in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it talks about, you know, that, you know, that there are gifts of the spirit and so forth is, and it really, and I'll, honestly, if you'll read it real clear, the word gift is not used in reference to what we call the gifts of the spirit. Because it says, and the manifestation, yeah, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to, to, to profit with all. Amen? Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit, and it never calls them gifts. We call them gifts. The word manifestation means an endowment. And it's divided severally to every man as he wills. Okay? So, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't get, you know, some gift. Just automatically. The gift that you get is the Holy Spirit. The infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God teaches that when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak with other tongues. That's what the Word teaches. The Word puts a lot of emphasis on that because of the five recorded incidences, it specifically states in three of them, they spoke with tongues. Paul, we know, spoke with tongues because he said so. He testified to it. And then the fifth one is implied. Now, I can't help but believe if the Bible puts an emphasis on it, there's a reason. Amen. Amen. And if the Bible has a reason for it, then we should, be, we should follow out to what the Bible says. People should expect to speak with tongues when they get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I just couldn't let that go and let it just kind of lie out there because so much good was done and so many wonderful things. But that statement bothered me in the sense that it's like we're trying to water it down to make it palatable so that people will be more open to receiving when just, just go for it, baby. Amen? And don't feel condemned that somehow, because see, the devil will come back to you later. If, if, if I don't correct, and I'm correcting it with the word. Is this not what the word says? Is this not the emphasis of the word? It's not a human emphasis. It's a word emphasis. Can somebody say amen? amen. The word emphasized people speaking in tongues when they got filled. Then if I do what the word says, it's not a human emphasis. I'm just speaking what the Word says. Amen? And so uh, I couldn't let that go. We're, we're people in our church were heard all this, and then they go out and they start trying to minister to people, get them filled with the Holy Ghost, and then that devil comes to you and goes, now don't make any big deal about the Holy Spirit. That's just a man emphasis. Well, no, it's not. It's the emphasis from the Word of God. Now, see, I'm not going to cast out everything else that was said because of that statement, I know that statement was made in order to try to make it more palatable. And, I, and I, can, I, can I give you another guarantee? They don't say that in Africa. They just say, God's going to come on you, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'll speak in tongues. But see, we're messing with the American church. We're trying to make it palatable. Let's be with us. We just got to be as bold everywhere and not try to order something down and give somebody something that's going to mess other people up further down the road. So... I know a lot of our church was there, and a lot of church was involved, and we're excited about what took place. We're excited about all the, you know, I believe people got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues last night. I believe people got healed. Glory to God. Yeah. We'll find out later some of the testimonies and some of the numbers and stuff. But it just bugged me. Well, as your pastor, I've got, I've got to come back and say, here's, you know, because, because it was a little bit, you know, it's, it's condescending almost to those who say that. You're just putting too much emphasis on one thing. And then and the other implication was you might get the gift of working of miracles instead of tongues. No. That, that's not accurate. So that's not accurate. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues. Amen. God may use you in the working of miracles. God may use you with the gift of healing, but those are endowments that are manifest as the Spirit wills. 
you don't get to walk around with it all the time. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, we have people who, who flow in, in certain gifts on a regular basis. The Lord told Brother Hagin, that he, 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 said, he said, I've given you a special anointing. Okay? But, you know, and he told him that when you do this, it'll come in manifestation. He just couldn't walk around. He didn't walk around 24-7 doing whatever. Brother Robert, she says, hand would burn when that was a manifestation. See, what happened? The Holy Spirit brought it in the manifestation. He couldn't make it. Brother Hagin would get up and he'd say, you know, the anointing's lifted. It's not manifest. Well, if he had that gift all the time, he could keep right on ministering. He said, I, 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 he said, I would sit down and just stop the prayer line sometime because there was no more anointing to minister to the sick. So you, don't, so you don't get a, one of the nine manifestations of the Spirit when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. It might be tongues, might be healing, might be working in miracles, might be, you know, no. Those manifest as the Spirit wills. See, tongues and interpretation of tongues are for the ministry to people equivalent to prophecy. Amen. But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, see, every believer that's filled with the Holy Ghost can pray in the Spirit. Wow, because Jude says, pray, ye beloved, build it, Jude 20, chapter 1. There's only one, there's no chapters, but we just say Jude 1, 20 just for uh, consistency and reference sake. Amen. But ye beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, Paul wrote over in the 1 Corinthians in chapters 12 and 14, you can read through there, and he says this. He said, when I pray in, the, uh, pray in tongues, my spirit, when I pray in the spirit, my spirit prayeth. However, my understanding is unfruitful. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue speaketh mysteries. You start putting all things together, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, and you find out praying in the Spirit is praying in other tongues. And then Jude tells all of us to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, what am I saying? Don't go out and go, oh, there's, no, I don't care. But it's something that had to be corrected. We supported the work. We supported everything that was going on. But that was, some, was a point that I thought, I have to address this as the pastor so my congregation knows what the Word says. And then you can just go on from there and leave that other stuff alone and go, well, I don't praise God. Good things happen. Wonderful things happen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.